Preparations for upcoming offensives continue across the front lines. In Luhansk, Ukrainian forces are attempting to push the line of contact further east of the Zerebets and Oskol rivers in advance of a further offensive deeper into the territory. The cities of Zatove and Kermina are still being hastily fortified, but rumors have been circulating that the Russians are planning a withdrawal from the northern section of the line. But the likelihood of this withdrawal taking place will depend on the success of the upcoming offensives by the armed forces of Ukraine. In Donetsk, units of the DPR and PMC Wagner are attempting to break through Ukrainian positions in Solidar and Bakhmut. Heavy shelling on both sides has rendered the once large city of Bakhmut a ghost town and has absolutely devastated the surrounding region. Founder of the Wagner PMC, Prigozhin, continues to levy harsh criticism on the Ministry of Defense and Russian Allied forces for their failures in the special military operation. The capture of Bakhmut would boost Prigozhin's prestige in Russia, which is perhaps the reason why his forces continue to throw themselves at the Ukrainian defensives to no avail. Overall, the Russians are desperate for a success on the front lines, so we should expect to see further attacks in this sector of the front to continue for the foreseeable future. The quietest part of the front lines is Zaporizhia, but both sides are continuing to build up their force strength in the region. The armed forces of Ukraine are planning a three-pronged offensive with the goal of taking the cities of Vasilivka, Tomak, and Polohi. If they are successful in capturing these cities, then the offensives would continue toward Berdyansk, Melitopol, and Enerhodar to fulfill the strategic goals of the campaign, completely cutting off the Crimean land bridge, which would sever the last supply route to the Russian forces in Kherson, and also the liberation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. In Kherson, shelling, skirmishes, and limited offensives continue south of Kreviri. The armed forces of Ukraine are assembling assault groups in the area of Novaya Kamenka in preparation of a major offensive towards the Novokokovka Dam. Yesterday, Russian authorities announced that citizens in the Kherson region should begin evacuation to the east bank of the Dnieper River as part of their new relocation program. This signals that the Russian forces are running very low on supplies and can no longer sustain the soldiers as well as the citizens on this side of the river. The Russians claim they will fight for every inch of this bridgehead, but if the Ukrainian offensives prove too much of a challenge, then we should expect to see a complete withdrawal to the east bank of the Dnieper River. Early this morning, two battalions of the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade and one battalion of the 17th Tank Brigade launched a limited offensive to create local breakthroughs in the Russian defenses near Milove. After hours of fighting and heavy losses, the Ukrainians committed additional reserves from the 56th and 60th Infantry Brigades, but with no success. Limited offensives in local skirmishes like this are commonplace across the front lines. The goal of these skirmishes is to probe Russian defenses and create local breakthroughs on small sectors of the front to compromise the Russian lines of defense. The Russians are continuing to target the critical energy infrastructure of Ukraine with missile and drone attacks. Ukrainian President Zelensky stated that up to 30% of the nation's power stations had been destroyed since the beginning of these strikes on October 10th. If the Russians are able to destroy the majority of Ukraine's energy infrastructure, the civilian population would be in serious risk of succumbing to cold temperatures this winter. And because of this threat, Germany and the United States have committed to send more advanced air defense systems to Ukraine, two of which have already arrived and are being put to work in the Kiev region. Mobilization in Moscow and St. Petersburg abruptly came to an end on Monday, but in other regions, particularly regions with large ethnic minorities, mobilization seems to continue, which will perhaps contribute to the growing divide between the subjects of the Russian Federation. Rumors are circulating that both Russian and Ukrainian forces are under heavy pressure to achieve major battlefield victories this year, so we should expect both sides to attempt major escalations in the near future. 